Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, so um, let's say you had a virtual production or a virtual event where you had a client that wanted to unveil a new product and you would want to do so since the start of the show is this new product, you would want to do so in style. And that's what we're going to discuss in this video using a, a product from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. So the result would look a little something like this. Now, the effects that you just saw came from a preset from this character appearance and dissolved by Nadir FX. And uh, I believe I got this for free. It was part of the monthly giveaways. So I will be using this and it is basically a VFX pack with a lot of stylized uh, dissolves that you can choose from. And even though here it's uh, showcased using the mannequin mostly, but of course you can use it on any object that you want. Now, once you've downloaded the effects pack, you can open up the demo map that comes with it. Here, there's an example map. And here you can sort of, you know, do a window shop of all the presets that is available. And you can look at them one by one and choose one that you would like to use and there's quite a lot of them to choose from and honestly they're all pretty cool so choose one that you like and when you do just you know note the number there's a number for each of them here for example i want to use let's say number 11. so next what you want to do is i'm going to create a new blueprint uh, actor, name it uh, BP underscore uh, product. And I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to open up the blueprint and I'm going to add one of the static meshes. Uh, these are statues that I got from the marketplace. And I'm going to pretend that uh, this is the actual product that, you know, I want to unveil in my uh, virtual event. So we have the product the statue over here, and now I need to find out which material it's using. I want to select it. And uh, here can, you know, just there's only one material being used and I can use the icon here to find out where the material is stored. So here it is. This is the material that it's using. And now we are going to add a function to it so that we can add the effect that we just chose, which is effect number 11. So to do that, I'm going to open the material. And as you can see, this is actually a material instance. So we want to find the uh, master material actually. So go to the parent here, locate it, and let's open this one up. And now I need to go to the folder containing the VFX with the dissolve. And there is a folder called material function. And I'm not going to choose mobile because we're not on mobile. I'm going to choose the standard folder. And then uh, if you recall, we chose the effect of the one that's number 11. So here's the one. So what I'm going to do is drag this function and bring it into my statues uh, master material. And the first thing you want to do here is to change the blend mode from opaque to mask. And now the opacity mask pin will be lit up and you can connect the uh, emissive to emissive color and the opacity mask to the opacity mask. So now you've connected the uh, material function to the material. So next, what you want to do is all these input pins is you want to convert them to uh, parameters, promote to parameters, and now they will become editable later on in your material instance and also in the sequencer. So right click, promote to parameter, uh, right click, promote to parameter, and just continue with all the input pins. Okay, now uh, different material functions will have uh, different parameters. Uh, but the common one here is color and the color is, you know, the color of the glow during the transitions, what color you want it to be. So here I'm going to keep it to white for now. And the emissive multiplier is basically the glow. I'm going to change the default to 10. And the important one here is the uh, appearances. 
Now I don't know what the offsets are for yet. I'm going to try and change it to one and two here. But for the appearance, it's from zero to one. So when it's on zero, uh, it means that, you know, your object will be invisible. And when it reaches one, it will be fully uh visible so anything in between you can see the uh, dissolve effect happening so uh, i'm going to apply this and now let's go to the material instant and now you should see additional parameters so here they are the offset one offset two and the emissive multiplier is here and you should also get uh the color okay so the color is down here the color v3 is here so all the parameters here will be available in the material instance. So let's visualize this. Let's put our product inside the level and it's a little small. I'm going to make it maybe, whoa, two. Okay, that's a nice size. And now let's uh, see the effect, check if the effect is working or not. So to do this, I've opened up my material window and I changed the color to, of the effect to red uh, because the statue is white and white on white, it would be hard to see. I set the offset uh, to zero for now so we can see uh, how it affects the effect. And here for the appearance, it's set to zero. And let's bring it up and see what happens. Okay, so it's actually going from zero to one. Let's see what the offset does. Like offset one, is it doing anything? Ah, okay, so this is more of the uh, position of the effect that you can play with. The offset two is also for the position. Okay, so I'm guessing the offset two is for the vertical position and the offset one is for the horizontal uh, position. Uh, again, not all material functions have these uh, offset parameters, so you know, don't be surprised if each different effects, uh, you can manipulate uh, different things. So now we know our effect is working. So how do we now set it up so it can now dissolve and undissolve uh, using a trigger uh, in uh, Eximetry? Now to make my life easier, I'm going to rename the parameters in the master material. For the appearance, I'm going to uh, rename this to effects. IO and for the emissive multiplier, I'm going to call it effects glow. And for the um, color, I'm just going to name it effects color. So now I know that all the three parameters that I might want to animate later has the same tag and it's easier for me to remember. I'm going to go back inside my products blueprint and we're going to go to the event graph and we're going to create a dynamic material. Here you go. Create dynamic material instance for the statue and I believe the material it's using is called statue1 underscore okay, this one. And we're going to uh, get Eximetry scalar. We're going to call it dissolve. And uh, we are going to set scalar parameter value because it's only going to be uh, needing a value from 0 to 1. We're going to drag from event tick, not from the event begin play. And the parameter that we want is called fxio so that's why i changed the name to something easier so it's easier for me to recall it when i need it so fx space io and this should be it now we're going to pass the uh scalar a uh, pin to axymmetry and we can manipulate it later so compile and let's cook our project so here we are in axymmetry and if i select my project node my unreal project I can see my dissolve pin here and uh, here I can actually change the number from 0 to 1 and as you can see the effect is indeed working. And now to turn this into a trigger I can just get a uh, dash scalar, plug it in there and set from 0 to 1 or actually it could be from 1 to 
zero. There you go. This has to be a reveal. And now I can get a uh, copy logical. Call it reveal. Okay, now I have a switch here. So on and off. And we're going to add a smooth so we can see the uh, transition. There you go. Let's test it out. Okay, and if it's too fast, you can play around with the delay. Set it to two and two. And now you have a trigger to reveal or hide your uh, product. So now what if you wanted to pull off the same effect, but with a blueprint that contain a 3D object like the car that I showed in the beginning, which is actually uh, consists of many different parts. So for example, like this uh, car blueprint here, if I open it up, you will see that it has a lot of different parts. You actually have to animate each of them, but you know, of course, this is a very extreme example. Maybe you could make a model with uh, fewer static meshes and fewer materials, so you didn't have to animate so much. But you know, I just wanted to show you guys a very extreme example. And uh, the fun part, you know, when you animate everything one by one is that you could actually have the timing different. So you could have the body dissolve or, you know, uh, reveal first and then the wheels and so on. So you have more uh, creative possibilities. Now to show you guys a little bit how this is set up, I'm not going to go through the entire process because it was very tedious to set it up. But basically I created a level sequence and here inside my sequence, I have the blueprint uh, with my car in it. And if I click here, the drop down, I have all the different parts of the cars here and they basically have the same uh, parameter which is going from zero to one to reveal the car so if i scrub to the left here as you can see all the parts of the cars will dissolve and it would reveal again when i scrub to the right so uh, again since these are uh, independent tracks i could for example if i wanted the body body to sort of uh, reveal last i could like drag it to for example here somewhere in the middle and now the inner parts of the car will you know reveal first and then after that the body will follow so as i said you have more uh, creative possibilities when you're animating uh, things individually now, once you've done setting up your sequence, you can just go to your level blueprint and set up a trigger. So now you can trigger this animation and asymmetry. Now I'm not gonna go through step by step with how to set this up because I've already covered it in a how to trigger uh, animations video that I've made uh, previously. You guys can check that out if you don't know how to set it up. If you did set it up correctly, then you would now have a trigger when you load the project in asymmetry and now you can just trigger the uh, animation you want it to uh, you know dissolve out and of course you can press it again if you want it to reveal instead and so that's all there is to it that's how you can add a stylized dissolve effect uh, for your product reveals for your virtual production I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.